Hello and welcome back, Steven here again. And in our last video, we were working on our Best Buy data flow where we were collecting the categories and subcategory data from the Best Buy API for categories. And we took that information and we put it directly before put SQL, we placed it into our MySQL table. So everything's there. Now we want to take that data and start doing some more with it and expand our data flow a little bit more. Now, before we do that, I kind of want to organize this a little bit as I just don't want to start another branch off here and go into something different because they're going to be for two different Best Buy APIs and they're covering a little bit different as, uh, information as well. So let's see if we can clean this up real quick. And one of the best ways I like to do it when I'm working on projects is to use a process group. We'll give this a name. Let's see, categories and subcategories. So I want to take everything that we did out here and place it inside of this processor group for categories and subcategories. Uh, it makes it really nice and easy to deal with later. And we can manage them when we're, say, exporting data out into uh, a monitoring application where we want to graph this type of information while well, being able to select uh, based by category groups for what they're doing and not by individual processors is really nice and easy. Okay, so in order to get them in there, we're going to go to Control A and select all, unselect the group. We're going to copy all this, go inside, paste it, and there we go. We have all of it in here, but we're not done. One thing we need to do now is go ahead and make sure we're not selecting anything. Go over here to the configuration, and then add the Best Buy param for the parameter contacts to this group. Apply that. And we're done there. So now we should be able to show that this works. We're not gonna place it into anything. So we'll just disable the last part and we'll go ahead and start everything else. So all the processors are running, come up here to the top and we'll create one and get it kicked off. There we go, start, stop. and everything looks like it's working. Our loop is working correctly. Everything's still getting split. And there we go. So we have our final products getting all the way down to the put SQL, so ready to go to the table. So we know we're doing good there. So now we can go ahead and stop everything. Make sure everything's good, yep. Empty all the queues. And there we are. So we've successfully moved it into the categories and subcategories processor here. So let's select all, unselect this one, and delete. And unless there's something that's stopping it. Doesn't look like it. Should have been able to do that. Let's try it again. Select all, unselect. Oh, I just unselected it. Huh, why am I not getting... Oh, because everything's running. <laughs> okay, all those are stopped now. There we go. Delete works now. Okay, yep, can't delete things that are running. All right, so here we go. We can see now we have our first processor group and it falls underneath our NiFi canvas for the main route, and then inside of Best Buy data flow, and then we have our categories and subcategories. So the next thing we're gonna be working with is the Best Buy products API. So let's go ahead and grab a new process group. We'll put all of our work in there for this data flow, and we'll just call it products. And we can go ahead and enter that one. We want to set up our context for parameters. We're gonna use the same one. We'll just keep building off of that one. And now we are ready to go ahead and build this one out. Now there's a couple things we need to do before we can use the, uh, or we, we need to make some changes to our existing MySQL table. So let's go ahead and jump on over there to dBeaver. And then dBeaver, so my plan here is we're gonna take these five specific 
categories from the entire categories table. And we want to monitor these. And what I want to do is monitor them, monitor them like every five, 15 minutes or something like that. And what we have is we have our PlayStation 5 category. So there's a category for that. And this is, the, we're going to run this right here. We see when we run this, we get these results down here. And what we have here and what we notice is that, well, we already knew categories ID was duplicated a lot inside the table because of subcategories that we combined with it. Uh, so we're going to want to take these individual category IDs and just get one of each one. So we use a distinct on that when we query from this table. And we want to go and collect all the products from these categories. So that's what we're going to do. And the way we're going to use the API for products is just provide it with the category ID and it will provide us back all the products that exist in the ID. Now, good thing about that is if new products are added or taken away from the category ID, then we'll automatically get that change and we'll see that change represented. And then we're going to want to set up a loop for we can make sure we get all the correct information for it and also take that data and add it into a database where we can keep track of stuff like, we, uh, I know for a fact that PlayStation 5, Xbox X and S series, some GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD, and then some CPUs as well, uh, but not, not TVs. There's a couple models that are going to be sold out. So we'll be utilizing and tracking that information as well when we do these polls. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Well, one thing we want to do is we don't want to do a select against everything in here. And I don't really want to do a select and have to put a where statement in all the time on categories ID to say what we want and have to add that. An easier way would be to modify our database table for best by categories and just put a flag in there that indicates which ones we are currently monitoring and not monitoring or tracking. So inside of dbeaver, got both ways you can do it, but we'll just quickly double click on it. And go ahead and add a new right click on it and say create a new column from dbeaver. We'll say tracking. This will be our tracking. We're going to change the data type to an int. And the default is going to be zero. And there we go. That's in there. We're ready to save it. Persist. And it should be good. We check the data and we can see we have tracking now. Next thing we need to do is update all these columns or update all these categories that we want to keep monitoring, right? We're just going to do it off of category ID. I don't want to go through and weed out every single subcategory. And honestly, some of these we do want to track for all of them maybe. So you never know. So in this case, we're just going to do a regular update to Best Buy category set. And then we're going to set the tracking Equals one, where category ID in, and we'll just copy from here because we already have it available to us. And now we're ready to run it. And now we can test this. And Best Buy, where tracking equals one. Okay, so we're gonna get those. Now we have some duplicates. So our query that we're gonna to wanna to do is a modification of this one. And it's just gonna be uh, distinct. <clears throat> the only thing we need back is category ID. And I think we're good there for right now. We might have to change this a little bit later. There we go. We've got five category IDs that we're gonna be tracking and sending off to the products API to get the product information back from. Let's go ahead and jump back over to NiFi so we can start looking at how we're going to build out this data flow for the products API. So switch back over and here we are. Okay, so first things first. I know we need an execute, execute SQL, execute. Uh, I'm going to use execute SQL record because I'm just going to use this one to do the SQL statement, get the response back, and I'll actually convert it back into JSON because I know I need it into JSON. This is something that will run, say, every five minutes right now from our SQL server or MySQL server. 
And I'm gonna go grab that query we just made. <clears throat> there we go. So our select distinct, that gives us our five categories back and only give us the things that we're tracking. So it's much easier to manage because we just have to turn off and on categories that we're no longer tracking. From here, we do want to output each one of these into an individual flow file. That way we can work with them because we're gonna have to make some changes and deal with the loop problem again. And our record writer, I already have one set up at the root level for just a basic JSON writer. So we'll select that one. Matter of fact, we'll just take a peek at it, make sure there's nothing different about it. And we can see it just, it's just basic. Inherit the schema, don't do anything special. And the only thing it's set up for is grouping. Instead of being set, I think defaults to array, it's set to one line per object. Uh, makes it easier to deal with some other, depending on where you're trying to set it. So there we go. That one's nice and easy. We'll go back into our data flow and back to the products. And here we are. So this is going to be our rename it, get tracked, get tracked categories. Scheduling's good. We're good there. We should be fine. <clears throat> now, the next thing I know I want to do is when this comes in, I want to evaluate on the JSON uh, responses we have and convert the category ID into a attribute so we can pass it into the API. So we know we're gonna be going to evaluate JSON path will be our next one. Feed there. And we can go ahead and we can route the failure back onto itself. Actually, we'll just terminate it for right now. I terminate. There we go. Okay, so that one's terminated. Now we can test this out real quick. There we go. There's our five categories. Take a peek at one of them. There we go. Just something simple. Categories ID. And then that'll become an attribute. Now we know we're going to pass this into the products API. So we've already built this before. So why waste time trying to build it again? Let's go back out one, go back to categories and go up to the top of this. So just like we're doing with the generate here, we don't need that step because we already have an execute going into the eval that'll pass it on. So we have something passing it on into the invoke. Let's check out our generate though. What are we doing here? So we're creating a attribute, right? We're setting the current page to default to one because it's required uh, based off how we built the API uh, request. So we're gonna wanna handle for that as well on ours, but we're not gonna use a generate to do it. But we are gonna take some pieces from here. So we're gonna copy the invoke categories API and grab the entire loop and the route. There we go. Control C to copy, go back one, go back to products, paste it in here, move it to the side. So we, oops, still selecting everything. Okay, so our invoke is gonna be what we take in next. We're gonna grab those matches, terminate our other relationships. All right, now we did see current page was an issue, right? So we need to handle for current page. And there's an easy way to do that. Uh, we can't do it inside the eval, right? So we can actually modify our select statement here and make it so it returns a placeholder for us here. And this is going to be one as current page. There we go. So now we have that, which we can evaluate on now. And the evaluation is going to be, well, we haven't added our evaluations yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need categories ID. We're gonna send these into the attributes. Category ID is the name we're gonna give it. There's the value we want it to get. And then the next one is current page. And we'll have it pick up the current page. Ooh. 
All right, so there's our two attributes we're going to create. Now we need to modify the invoke and change it over to utilize the uh, products API base URL that we actually added to our uh, primers context before. So we need to go ahead and make those changes. Let's go ahead and go inside that one. Well, first of all, let's confirm that this eval is working correctly. Passed everything through. Oh, you know what? This isn't going to work because I didn't rerun it yet with the new statement. So we'll go ahead and clear the queue. Run this one again. It will move forward. And now we can check those out. You can see that both of them are there as part of the content. And now we can check out, make sure categories ID and current page are there. Perfect. That's what we needed. Now we have our API. We need to make changes to this. Okay, so not too much is going to be different here, but we do need to change the show. We need to change the base URL. And then everything else looks good. The format will stay the same, API key, page size, and current page to pick up the uh, attribute. So let's go ahead and modify this now. And control space. There's our products. It's got a little space in there though. All right, so that's good there. Uh, we got the, okay, so there's something a little bit different. Let me grab an example of what it, what we need to account for. Okay, so, oh, didn't mean to quit out of there. Matter of fact, we can just go back here. We'll look at it over here. So this is the information we need to pass into. These are the things we need to handle for when we're building this URL. Uh, so it is a little bit different. Uh, one of the big changes is we need to go modify our base URL for the products because uh, as you can see, we have zoom in a little bit easier. There we go. So we have the URL MM products. Now for categories, the question mark goes right here. Uh, but for the products URL, we actually have the open parentheses here. And then we're going to be using category path.id to specify the ID that we're pulling in this request. So what we're going to do here is substitute this ID in here with our attribute that we have, but we need to take care of this and go and modify the URL. We're going to remove the question mark and just manually add it to the end when we put this stuff in here. So we're going to take it out there. I need to go ahead and set that up now. All right, so we know we need to go back into our parameter context, go ahead and modify the parameter, go into products, take away the question mark, apply, close, close out here, and we're good. Okay, so that'll take care of that part. Uh, so where are we at? 18 minutes, so we'll go ahead and hold off here. We managed to clean some things up, uh, group create our process groups now so that we have two different areas and we can be more organized about how we're handling this and uh, start building out our new data flow for products. So when we come back in our next video, we'll go ahead and finish this out, get the loop done, uh, check the database, or and then start figuring out how we're gonna add this into uh, a table or wherever we wanna place this data so that we can accurately keep pulling it on a set interval and getting updates done. So I'll catch you in the next video, bye.